Hello, this is um, Professor Angelia, excuse me, with part three of Works of Hearts, Why is Everyone So Angry class? Um, last time we were talking about um, that um, co-workers, indeed any relationship, uh, should be more about collaboration um, than competition and winning. That's not what a lot of people uh, go by, but Trust me, it works better. I know a lot of people with successful businesses that run them that way, you know, and people don't hate them and don't hate to work for them and they don't get, you know, bad word of mouth. So, <laughs> trust me. So, all right, we're going to take up on. It can be hard to handle an angry workplace. Some people just bug us. It is beneficial to you to keep your cool. Unless you enjoy taking a ride in an ambulance because you have given yourself a heart attack. <laughs> Remember that another person's anger is just that. Their anger. You don't have to buy into it. Not to make light of anger. But how you react to it is your choice. If your boss is acting like a toddler... Let yourself imagine them as a toddler. You're more likely to have to stifle a giggle at their outrageously immature behavior than to take it as a personal affront. If you've never ever seen a toddler have an all-out temper tantrum and your boss or coworker is reminding you of that, let your mind go there. It's appalling to see a grown professional act this way or you can imagine your irate boss as the figure in the scream painting try to stifle the laugh since they are already mad <laughs> anger can be helpful it can cause discomfort and therefore change Effective anger must be directed at the target of your anger. Appropriately expressed anger gives you a sense of justice and fair play. Either your anger will get the desired result, or it will give you a new perspective on why it won't. You need to argue fairly. If you can express exactly what is making you angry, you can get a better resolution than with vague generalizations such as you always or all the time, which is probably not true. Sometimes, people are just not going to get you. And they may not even get themselves. And this can be the reason for their anger problems. This can make it easier to fight back or to choose to let it go. Turn the page here. There are, of course, times when we will get and should get angry. There is no reason to shock everyone with insane-looking rage, though. The best thing that we can do when we are angry at someone is to walk away in the heat of the moment and come back when we have calmed down. Showing anger is a strate in a strategic, calmer way can help the other person to understand why you are angry. Set up a time to discuss the problem with the person. By scheduling a time and place for this discussion, you address it like a constructive meeting, where there can be a solution arrived at. It can save a work relationship if you can resolve your problems. Ask the other person if they are willing to listen to your side, because sometimes they aren't. Tell them that you have something important to say, in your opinion. That doesn't mean that the person actually will listen to you. 
Some people just do not want to hear another's opinion on anything. They believe that they are always right. And listening to you is just a waste of their time. But, if you do your best to try and resolve the problem, then you can at least have the peace of mind that you did your best, so you were not to blame for the outcome. And I've had that in situations um, where there's a person in a uh, position of authority, um, and they decide they know exactly what you mean or are doing or whatever, and they may be totally 100% backwards off base. But in their mind, they're always right and they know what they're doing. Um, and those are the kind of people who can screw up other people's lives. Um, and I think it's a shame that anyone thinks they're always right. Because no one is ever always right. Unless your name is Jesus. And if it ain't, then you are not always right. <laughs> Sometimes we all lose our temper. When we do, it's important to apologize. Sometimes we just blow up inappropriately because things have just piled up on us. And this incident was the last straw. It's important to go back and examine your behavior, what caused it, and to apologize if you were wrong. Sometimes just an apology can fix a relationship. Remember, you are probably the only one who cares what your excuse was. You don't have to give the other person your life story. You know why you did it. They don't have to. They just need the apology. The long excuse apology is more about you rationalizing what you did than apologizing to them for doing it. That drawn out explanation can feel insincere to some people. Just apologize for your behavior and move on. It seems basic, but it's what works best. After examining apologies, psychologists have found that the shorter, the sweeter. A genuine apology is more readily accepted than one full of excuses. Wait until you really do feel sorry. As usually people can tell. It may take a day or more before you feel sorry for misplaced anger. Think about the effects your misplaced anger may have had on the other person. Think about how it must have made them feel. Think about any consequences that your behavior may have had for them. Thinking about consequences may make you have a little more compassion on your fellow human beings. It takes humility and courage to apologize. So, by saying you're sorry, it makes you actually feel sorry. The act of apologizing may come before your actual feelings of guilt. Just saying you're sorry is not enough. You should also listen to the person you just apologized, got to turn my page here, to, and see if they have something that they want to say. They may want to tell you how hurt or angry they were at your outburst. Do not justify your behavior to them. Just listen and accept what they have to say. Breathe deeply, if that helps, and let it in. That can diffuse the whole incident. Apologize, then listen. Do not defend yourself. Do not react to what they're saying. Just listen to them. That's the key in apologies. Less is more. Watch out for your own negative feedback loops. An apology is just that. 
by beating yourself up over it, you're being just as abusive to yourself as you were to the person that you unjustly blew up on. Just apologize, then let it go. Let your self-esteem grow for having the ability to take responsibility for your behavior. Recognize your humility that you could apologize. Excuse me. You treated another human being badly. So you should feel guilty. Don't treat yourself just as badly. What we need to cultivate in today's world and workplace is emotional intelligence. We need to be able to take a step back and think about our reactions. Is your anger going to help the situation in any way? We are often in an escalating situation where our anger just keeps rising. Suppressing anger is not good for you. It can literally kill you. However, if we face and look at our anger, we can resist blowing things even further out of proportion. Alcoholics Anonymous has a strategy called HALT. It means look out for being hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Because these things can drive you to drink. It works the same with anger. If we aren't feeling our best, we may take that out on others. It may work if you stop and think about whether or not anything else besides this situation is contributing to your anger. You can cool down by taking some deep breaths. This gives you time to think and calms you down physically. Our parasympathetic nervous system kicks in and helps to calm the stress. Imagine what the other person is feeling. Identify what you are feeling. Are you both on the same wavelength? Or is it just a misunderstanding? Are your points of view irreconcilable? If you can imagine the other person's point of view, like they do on the debate teams, you can help yourself see both sides of what's fueling the anger. Excuse me, ear itch there. Name the emotions that you and you think the other person are feeling that are contributing to the anger. Maybe you're feeling fear at this person's outburst. Explain to them that such outbursts seem irrational to you and scare you. Maybe they just don't get it. They may really not have had anyone tell them that before and are totally unaware of how their outbursts look. Turn my page here to other people. You have the right to get angry, but not the right to fire it at all others inappropriately. Maybe someone is jealous of you for some reason. Maybe someone resents your success or happiness. Maybe they or you are just exhausted. Maybe they or you are feeling unappreciated. Be specific in your naming of your emotions, and it will help you identify and diffuse them. Move on. Take a moment to reflect. Identify, resolve, and let go. Once you know why you or someone else has contributed to this angry situation, you can move forward. Remember, it's within your right to be angry. So it's within others' rights to be angry, too. However, 
Anger should be aimed at the right person and not taken out on others. Anger should be used in as calm and rational a manner as possible and not blown out of proportion or erupted all over the place like a volcano. There is a right time for anger. Think about how it's going to affect everyone involved. I'm going to have to pause for a minute. Someone's being rude. Sorry about that. Nobody went nothing as usual. Okay, so I'm going to back up here a little bit. Uh, that you should not erupt your anger all over the place like a volcano. There is a right time for anger. Think about how it's going to affect everybody involved if you were to express your anger in that particular moment. Would you be interrupting something nice for someone else? Anger can persuade people to do the right things. It can make people think about their actions. It can show that we care. It can help us rid ourselves of anger. So, there are good things about it. But, too much anger can kill you. And stress everyone around you to the point of breaking or quitting. Try to stop and think about why you are angry and what the best way in the situation is to use your anger. People have begun to think that mindless, directionless anger is okay, but it isn't. Do we want to be a civilized society or a society of petty dictators? Each trying to control our own little world. Feel your anger. But express it in an appropriate way. Even Jesus got angry and ran people from the temple. Think before you act. Try to have empathy for the other person. And put yourself in their shoes how would you feel? Then let your anger out appropriately and not in a way that could harm anyone else. Thank you for taking this class. I hope you have learned something that you can implement and practice in your own life. Sincerely, your instructor, Reverend Angelia Swartz Coleman, PhD. That'd be me. <laughs> and that's the end of. Uh, this class. I hope you found it educational and informational. And um, that's all. Until next time.